lovely, beautiful spring days we've been having have been just like a balm to my soul. We have so much rain in our area during this time of the year, during a lot of the year actually, and so it just seemed like all of a sudden spring just kind of happened and the temperatures went up into the upper 70s and we even got a little swimming in the pond. Well, my husband and grandkids did. It's still, water is 56 degrees in our pond, so that's a little bit too cool for me. But I have just loved all these uh, beautiful days. Uh, that string of beautiful days has come to an end, however, and today it's overcast and the temperatures are 60, uh, if we're lucky, so it's quite a drop, and um, rain in the next few days as well. But that is okay. I am feeling like I just had such a refreshment with those beautiful spring days. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to my channel. My name is Crystal, and this is Homemaking on the Homestead, and this is Homemaker's Journal 33. And I enjoy doing these homemaker journals as a way to kind of reach out and encourage all homemakers. Uh, regardless of what stage of homemaking you're at in your life, whether you're a young mom or you're an empty nester like me and uh, or a soon-to-be one, uh, you, you know, I think our, our uh, world has enough negativity in it that it's good to look at and enjoy things that are encouraging and helpful. So that's always my goal when I when I make these uh, homemakers journals. It is early in the morning and earlier than I usually make videos, but um, I just got up really early. My husband had errands to run in town today and I just thought, well, you know what? I'm just gonna take advantage of this quiet time, this peaceful time. Not that he's not peaceful, but you know, just that quietness and uh, work on a video and Take my, I had my coffee. I pretty much had my coffee already. I, I had one cup, and I'll have another cup maybe later. But right now I made myself a cup of green tea to come and sit down and talk with y'all. I was listening to a, a Lydia Sherman podcast uh, the other day. Uh, Homemakers Radio is what she calls it. And I, I really enjoyed one of the things she's very, you know, encouraging on waking up in the morning and putting yourself together, getting dressed, um, you know, have your shower, get dressed, wear something nice uh, that makes you feel good because you'll ultimately feel good about your day if you do that. And uh, I totally agree with that. I've always had that same kind of a, of, uh, a method. Also, uh, she said, you know, have a favorite drink so that during the day it is something that you have to look forward to. She's a, she's big on tea. You know, if you've been around here for a while, you know I'm big on coffee. But my other favorite drink is tea. And usually I pick green tea. Um, I had done a video of a couple videos ago on intermittent fasting. So I intermittent fast, so my choices are green tea, black tea, and coffee, and water. And I do drink lots of water too, but of them all, I think the one thing that I don't, that I enjoy just sipping on throughout the day will be cups of hot green tea. As the warmer weather is coming around, I have wondered if iced green tea will be a thing for me in this summer. I don't know, I've never tried it, we'll see. Do you all have a favorite beverage that you just like to sip on throughout the day? All right, so today's Homemaker's Journal, I have um, at least one recipe to share. I haven't quite finished all the editing for this, so uh, I may sn uh, sneak in another one. We'll see. I have, but I have a recipe I know to share. I have a little um, frugal talk to do, and I'm going to share a bit of update on my canner. I've now had the opportunity to can several jars of food since uh, I got my Presto Digital Canner. I have the Presto Precise. And um, I'm going to give you my review, what I think of it, and kind of show you what I have been doing with it. I know you've got snippets of things that I've been doing in past videos, but I'll give you a little bit more on that today.
So I shared about this book in my last Coffee with Crystal, I think, and it's called Money Secrets of the Amish, and I shared a little bit about delayed gratification in that particular video. I am really enjoying it. I made the comment in that last video that it's really hard at this point. I've read so many books on being thrifty and saving money. It's, it's really hard to find at this point something new and exciting. And what I think that I have enjoyed the most about her book, Laura Lee Cracker is her name, is the fact that uh, she was a journalist and she actually went to Amish communities. She lives on the East Coast and interviewed many Amish people to find out what are your money secrets? What kind of advice can you share? And she not only shares those interviews, which can be quite amusing and quite enjoyable to read. Uh, but she also uh, pulls out, like, you know, these bits of wisdom and things that we can actually do as well. So the chapter I just finished reading was chapter 8, and it was called Repurpose, Recycle, and Reuse. Obviously, there's nothing new in that concept, but uh, it was so funny because, you know, it's it's gotten to be more of a thing as we are, you know, trying to go green or trying to, you know, uh, utilize everything to its best advantage, uh, especially in this throwaway society. But this is how they've been doing their life all all from the very beginning. And she talked about how they will scour, you know, junkyards to find parts and to find treasures and they will come home and turn these parts it into along with maybe a few other pieces that they may have to purchase and they will make machinery to help do their jobs better like you know maple syrup evaporators and you know things like that and uh, I, I, I think the thing that really I, what impressed me the most is how dedicated they are to it and how that is just such a way of life they don't even think about it and uh, I, I, it reminded me this last week. So my microwave, actually the last couple of weeks, my microwave died. And um, my husband, who I've mentioned is a pretty handy guy, so uh, I was like, oh, it looks like we're going to have to buy another microwave because, right, this is the reusable society we live in. Things only last so long, and then it's time to replace them. And he was like, well, I'll look at it. So he took it into his little shop area, disassembled the whole thing, figured out what was wrong with it, and was able to make a repair. He says, well, I don't know how long this repair will last, but, uh, you know, if it stretches out our microwave for another six months or another year, it's like absolutely fantastic. That means I don't have to go and spend uh, money on that right now. Um, also, he had done this several years ago, and he had fixed a microwave, and it ended up lasting us in total from the time we bought it. It broke. He fixed it. We continued to use it. I think we had that same microwave for 10 years. So there are advantages to being able to see what you can do to stretch out the life of something. And, you know, maybe it isn't something big like a, an appliance, but, you know, there's a lot, um, like fixing he used to fix washing machines and you know there's a, so much stuff on uh so much information on youtube nowadays to be able to do your repairs on your own that i think it's really worth looking into sometimes if you feel like you have the skill also there's always the flip side like if the if the microwave had needed a part that was going to be you know 80 90 100 bucks to replace that part Obviously, that would not have been worth it because we can get a microwave for that price. So you, you have to weigh those things, your, your skills, your talents, but there's always something new to learn, right? So there's always a, a new skill to pick up uh, if you don't know how to do something just to see, can I get any more life out of this, whatever it may be. And of course, a lot of the things that the Amish do do not relate to us, uh, you know, we don't need maple syrup evaporators and we don't need farm equipment and things like that, at least most of us. And, uh, but at the end, I really like it because at the end she has this little, this little section before she moves on to the next chapter and it's called My Amish Money Makeover. And she takes the lessons that she learned from talking to all these Amish people and puts that down in what would be something practical that you could do today in our culture. Um, 
I got this book off of Thrift Books at the moment. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't much. And uh, or you may even be able to find it in your local library. So I think uh, it's, it's worth a read if you just want to be inspired and get a little new motivation for being frugal and saving money. As I mentioned in um, the video where I showed you that I had gotten this amazing canner for my birthday, I uh, had not used it at that point and wanted to give you guys an update. I cannot believe in about a month's time how many things I have canned. I also cannot believe how simple it is. I think I like the fact that I don't have to pull out my big canner, I don't have to, you know, dedicate a lot of space and time uh, because this is it's bigger than an instant pot for sure uh, but not as big as a big canner this is a great canner for beginners I think it's a great canner for people who are interested in doing small batches so back in the day when I had a huge garden and I would can you know hundreds of jars of food every summer it would not have been practical because I I actually have two pressure canners and I would have you know have them both on my stove going so that I was always in process of doing 14 jars at a time if I had a lot of something to can especially green beans I grew lots of green beans because my family ate lots of green beans but now with it just being my husband and I that I have to um, provide uh, uh, these things for. I tend to do more pint sized jars and I don't need to have 14 and you know big huge batches of, of, of jars of these things. So I, I am I like to be somewhat of an ingredient canner. I will ha make try to have jars of separate things that I can pull together to put together a soup or a stew. Um, as well as occasionally some whole meals in a jar type of, of canning. And so, so far, I have done both. The first full meal in a jar that I have did was uh, chicken stew. And so I did use quart-sized jars for that because one quart would certainly provide a meal if uh, I could uh, I could even thicken it up and put it into a pie crust for a chicken pot pie I could uh, put it use it as gravy over rice uh, you know it, it and I can add biscuits to that 
to make it a full meal and a salad on the side or something like that. So that would be plenty for my husband and I as a meal. The thing that I have really enjoyed about this canner more than just the size and the simplicity is the uh, the fact that I don't have to babysit it. You know, once I put my jars through, they ha you have to warm up your jars first. That's part of the process. And you fill your jars halfway full with water and put them in the canner and it goes through the warming process and then it'll tell you fill your jars. And so you then take out one jar at a time, dump out the water that was inside the jar, fill your jar, put it back in the canner. And you do that until all your jars are full. Then you put the lid on and then you proceed by pushing the button to the next step, which is to vent the canner. Once the canner has vented, it will beep and let you know that, and then you put the regulator on top, and you are done. You've already set the time before you even started. So after you put that regulator on, very simply, you just walk away. And if you've done any canning, then you know there's a lot of times often spent babysitting your canner because you have to put it on high to bring it up to pressure. And then you have to, as it, the pressure will continue to climb, and then you need to start adjusting the heat on your burner uh, to put that uh, pressure at the right spot where it will just kind of hang there for the required amount of canning. However, you really can't walk away from it because you'll think that everything is good and then you go to look and you see it starting to fall, so you gotta bump your heat just a tad. And you don't ever want it to let it go below the pressure uh, requirement because you will end up having to start your timing all over again. So that has been the biggest thing that I have enjoyed about this canner is that I don't have to babysit it. So once I get it to that point, I move on with my day. I can, you know, clean my house. I can take care of other things. I can do anything else in life that I need to do at that moment so that uh, while my canner just does its thing. It will then go through the cool down process and finally when it is all done and cooled, it will beep and let you know that you can take your jars out. So I give this, uh, after the use I've had so far, I give this a definite five-star rating. I am really loving it. Okay, ladies, I hope that you have enjoyed Homemakers Journal 33, and I hope that all of you have just an amazing weekend, uh, and I hope you have a blessed day today. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.